again. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog for Monday, January the 20th, 2020, uh, vlog number 151. So, uh, let's jump right into what's behind me. So, I have not quite finished this. This still needs to have its binding put on it, but um, I want to show you this because I don't really like it. Alright, and I'll tell you why. This is what they call paper piecing. Um, you have basically a pattern and it's on paper and you lay down the fabric and sew it in a certain way and then you put all the sections together and you get this. Now when I first saw this design which is by a woman called Tamara or Tamara, I'm not sure which, I think it's Tamara Kate. She came out with this design for Canada's 150th uh, birthday which was a couple of years ago. Um, actually on my second sewing machine, my little one, it actually has this design but done in different colors on my sewing machine because it was a special edition that came out for that particular year. But I've always liked the design. I thought it would be really cool. And now I'm going to tell you why I don't like this. Okay, first of all, I don't like the colors I chose for the leaf. Um, her colors were much better. They were more uh, blended in. Um, now she did use a very specific uh, fat quarter pack or I don't know if it was a fat quarter pack or what but she used fabrics all from the same line in the same colorway. Uh, but anyways I used what I had. Um, now before I put the quilting on it I definitely did not like it. I did a lot of heavy quilting on here. Again I used my embroidery machine to quilt it and I don't know if you can see it well enough or not. Um, I will be doing a idiot quilter uh, video about this and I'll do some sh uh, close-ups to show some of my other problems I had with this pattern in more detail. One thing I didn't like was I did not like the instructions. Now maybe the instructions were designed for someone that is more advanced than me. I don't know but I have a feeling they were very confusing. I have done paper piecing before mind you I have done it in a very limited way I haven't got a lot of experience with it but I can tell you I did not do it her way her way maybe made sense to her but in the way it was described in the uh, instructions I would have to flip the fabric here there and every which way to get things right and I just quite frankly didn't understand what she was doing so maybe it's more me than her but I think it's also her because not very good at all so I went searching on YouTube and on the internet at large to see if I could find if she had any more detailed instructions or a video because a lot of people do especially professional designers which I am assuming she is um, do have videos to help you along with the project well no didn't find one maybe there is something out there but I could not find it so I went back and I looked at some videos about doing paper piecing in the way that made more sense to me and that's the way I did this one. So I was able to put it together but there was cursing and swearing I can tell you that. So besides the colors and the very poorly in my opinion written instructions for this the other problem I had with it um, was when I came to piecing the back. I thought I had a piece of fabric large enough and I'm trying to use up stuff in my stash as I go along so I had to piece the back and to do that I reached into what I call my I'll just go around to this side I reached into my stash of Canada fabrics that I have collected and uh, this is what I came up with um, sort of a, a First Nations kind of design and the maple leaves which is fine then I had to decide on the color of thread for quilting I decided to go I didn't want something that was really going to stand out and hide the maple leaf completely but then again I did want to really direct the eye or the focus away from the maple leaf a little bit so I used a very light gray orofil thread through this and a very simple curly design which the quilting I think came out pretty good on it that's about the only thing I'm thrilled with um, I'm not that thrilled with what I chose for the borders because I picked stripes and yeah I should have known better there was stripes. I mean when you look at it it looks fairly even but of course I can see 
why I don't like it. Now, as I said, I am going to pick apart this quilt on a special edition, well, it won't be a special edition, just be an, another edition of the Idiot Quilter. So I have the binding left to put on it, and I can tell you I'm not that thrilled with this. It's okay, but I'm not that thrilled with it. Um, but I will finish it. Um, I'm gonna do the binding after I finish this vlog today, and we'll go from there. So, you know, sometimes these kind of things can frustrate you, but I always learned something. What did I learn from this? I learned that I do not want to ever touch another one of her designs, this Tamara Kate, because if they're all like this, forget it. And uh, uh, I think I'll do paper piecing sparingly. Um, and actually, to be honest, paper piecing to me doesn't really feel like quilting. It feels more like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, and I don't like doing jigsaw puzzles. So anyways, that's what I was up to last week. Okay, so that takes us to the YouTube channel of the week. Um, it's about quilting. It's called The Gourmet Quilter. This week's YouTube channel has to do with quilting, but quilting from a different perspective. It's great, great for beginners, and it's also great for people who want to think outside of the box and do something that's called art quilts. The name of the YouTube channel is called Gourmet Quilter, and the lady who puts this on is from the UK, and it's a very well done YouTube channel. If you're a beginner, she takes you through things step by step, shows you very clearly how to do various techniques. If you're an advanced quilter or you want to get into something that's a little untraditional, more into the art quite art type of quilting, then this YouTube channel's for you as well. So be sure to check out the Gourmet Quilter. So if you're interested, the link to that is in the show notes below, as are the links to my blog. I'm thinking of removing the blog. Uh, nobody's going to it, and to be honest, I'm not keeping up with it. So I'm just not a blogger. Simple as that. I'm a vlogger, but not a blogger. Um, Stephen and Walter Live. Um, to be honest, we're running out of things to talk about on Stephen and Walter Live that we think it might be of interest to people. This week we talked about our astrological signs and what they say about us as personalities and about our relationship, just for fun. You know, I never take those kind of things very uh, serious. You know, I've, they're just for fun. But anyways, that was kind of fun to talk about that. We are thinking about doing another art attack soon. Um, it's just that I have to figure out what we will do for an art attack. Um, it's different than just doing art for myself. When I have Walter involved, I have to think about uh, his knowledge of what he's going to be using. Um, also, it's the setup. Having to set it up, uh, you know, to get things all in the shot and things like that. It's times like that when I wish I had a multiple camera set system and a whole little switching panel that would work. And yes, those are available, but they're costly. And that's why I don't have one yet. Notice I said yet. I never say I never will. I just said yet. But anyways, we might do that. If any of you out there that are regular viewers of Stephen Walter Live have some ideas, please, 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 please put them in the comments uh, below or send me an email because I'm working with a blank slate here. So I need suggestions. Um, there's a link to uh, the book of the week, which we'll talk about in a moment. And that's taking into what's pissing me off this week. Now, I'm not really so much pissed off about this as more of it's a concern. And I'm going to back up here and talk to you a little bit about how this came about. Um, I'm gonna talk about customer service. Now I've talked about customer service before and we've all been there. We've had good service, we've had bad service. And what started out as I was expecting really bad service turned out to be the other way around. So I'm really not pissed off, I'm actually quite pleased. But what I'm pissed off at is the method I had to use to get what I want. So, let me back up. We have a soda stream. A soda stream, if you don't know what they are, is basically a plastic thing that you put a CO2 canister into and it blows bubble into your water. Or you can get syrups and things and make pop, but we use it just for sparkling water. That's all, we drink a lot of sparkling water. Now we've had this particular soda stream for about two years. We had one before and it busted after about a year. They have a two year warranty on them. So rather than going about and claiming on the warranty because figured we get no satisfaction from that whatsoever, we went and bought a replacement one. 
and they had changed the design slightly on them as well in the meantime so that was fine we got you know the newer design well it broke about a week and a half ago two weeks ago it's made out of plastic it probably costs them a whole 50 cents to make but they sell them for 119 dollars that does not include the co2 canister and we usually buy those Mm, they last us, we usually buy three canisters at a time. There's a deposit on the bottles. Uh, once you've bought one set of them, you know, you get the deposit added to the, uh, taken away from the overall price when you buy others. So about mm, once a month, probably, we end up buying about three canisters. And that costs us about 60 bucks. So it's, it's not an expensive investment, but it's not a cheap one either. So it broke. There's a little lever that presses down onto the top of the CO2 canister to basically let out the CO2 and blow bubbles in your water. And that busted. Walter tried to jerry-rig it up to fix it. That wasn't working very well. So he wrote to the company and he told them what their problem was, said how long we'd had it, and that, you know, what could you do for us? He never got an answer. We waited, you know, those things, so I say, two to five business days. Actually, I think on their case, they said two business days for them to get back to you. They never got back to Walter after about a week or a week and a half. So last week, I decided to go online and write to them myself. So I did. Now, I was not nasty, but I was not kind. And I basically, well, I guess call it a threat. I told her, turned around and I said to them, okay, this is what's happened. This is how long we've had it. This is why we're pissed off. I didn't use those words, but you know what I mean. Um, and I said, and you ignored my spouse's email. You never got back to us. So I do have a YouTube channel and I do review products. So unless I hear from you in a timely manner, in a couple of days, I gave them the same length of time as they give us, I said, I will talk about this on my YouTube channel and I may post it on Facebook as well. Yes, I was threatening, but yes, I would have done that too. I have done that in the past. I mean, after all, if you've got a YouTube channel, you might as well use it. Now, of course, what they don't know is I'm small potatoes. I'm not someone with millions of viewers, okay? So my reach is very limited, but they don't know that. So I left at that and I pretty much expected I'd hear nothing from them. Whoa, was I surprised. Within half an hour of sending that email, I got an email back. It's basically stating that they were sorry I was having this problem with my machine. Gave me a number to call uh, and they gave me a number that registered my complaint when I had written it in, a confirmation number or something like that. And they said, you know, please use this number and one of our customer service people or whatever will troubleshoot with you. Troubleshoot. Okay, we'll leave it at that. So I did, I phoned them immediately. I didn't have to wait in a queue, didn't have to listen to Muzak. The only thing I had to do was press one for English. And bang, I got a person. And the person I got was the person who wrote me that email and had been dealing with this. So I thought, bonus, When's that, how often does that happen? Uh, you usually get somebody called Monica, and they're all called Monica, you know, or Fred or Jane or whatever. Um, but no, I got this real person who knew exactly what I was talking about. So she said, do you have your soda stream handy? And I said, yes, I do. Because in the email they sent me, they said, when you call the number, make sure you have your soda stream handy. So I did. She says, okay. Can you take off the back and take out the CO2 canister? And I did that. And she says, just read me the numbers that are on the little sticker in there. So I did. Model numbers, stuff like that, I assume. So I read that. She said, okay, I just want to verify your name and your address. And we did. And she said, we'll be sending you out a new one within the next five days. That was the tail end of last week. So I expect it sometime by the middle of this week. We'll see. Whoa, knocked me over with a feather. No questions asked. No, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do that? Nope. Just simply they were going to do it. Now I did ask if they'd got the email that Walter had sent. And she said she actually had, because I'd mentioned that in my, my email to them. She said she had done a search before I contacted her and could not find a record of that email. 
So whether it got lost in the shuffle, Walter sent it to the wrong thing, I don't know. It doesn't really matter because I'm getting a new soda stream. So this is what I'm going to say. And this is why I'm not pissed off. I fully expect it to be pissed off. I fully to expect it to be handled by this company the way a lot of companies handle people, especially after the warranty. And the warranty had just run out about a month ago on this. And bang, they're sending me a new one. Great. Now, whether they've improved the design, if they had other people ex uh, have the same problem with it, because I doubt we're the only ones that ever had this problem, um, we'll see. But anyways, squeaky wheel gets the oil and it doesn't hurt. And this is what I'm a little pissed off about is that I had to throw around the idea that I was going to give them bad publicity. But that's the power of the internet, isn't it? So I'm happy. I'm not pissed off at all. I am pleasantly surprised and I'm getting a new soda stream. Well, I'm supposed to be getting a new one. Haven't got it in my little hands yet. So maybe I'll reserve a little bit of my enthusiasm until the day it actually arrives. I'll let you know. Okay, so that takes us to my new little segment here on the vlog, which is all about home decor DIY. And here's this week's. Today's tip in decor is for the bathroom, a very much neglected room in most people's homes. Why is that, you may say? Well, it's a bathroom. So how do you spruce it up? Well, why not put some sticks in a bottle. Yes, sticks in a bottle. They will add a whole new dimension to your bathroom experience. And if you want to get really fancy, you can add scent. Scent that will cover up the other unpleasant scents that may linger in your bathroom. Sticks in a bottle. So easy, so simple, but so elegant in your bathroom. And so I hope you enjoyed that tip. And next week, look for Look for my next home decorating idea. Okay, he says this tongue in cheek. Uh, product review. I don't have a product review this week, but I do have something where it involves new products. And that, of course, is right now in Arizona, Creativation is going on. It used to be called CHA. It's the show they have every year at this time where they show all the latest new crafting uh, items that are coming out in the next few months. And I always like to watch those to see what's new. Now, in the last few years, there hasn't been a heck of a lot that's gotten me excited. It's all been variations on a theme. But this year, I did see a couple of things I am genuinely interested in. One of them is, now, I don't think I would purchase this because it's probably expensive. And I think it's a little bit of a gimmick. But we are memory keepers. They're the people who came out with all the punch boards, you know, the envelope punch board, the alphabet punch board, the box punch board, all those. And I have all of those. And do I use them? No. Um, in fact, I've got one which is for I bought for binding books that's still, I'm looking at it right now. It's on the other side of the room and it's sitting on a shelf and it's never been taken out of the package. Now, we are memory keepers, uh, things that they make. They really focus on, you know, tools. Most of them are pretty good. They've had a few duds over the years or just, you know, you look at it and go stupid. Like there was something called a spinner or something, which I thought was just the stupidest idea I've ever seen in my life. You put a coffee mug thing on it and it looks like, you know, a, a one beater mix master kind of a thing or hand, you know, beater. Throw that on it and supposedly you pour gloopy stuff all over it and it, color it colorizes it. Yeah, okay. There's a crowd pleaser. I have a feeling that one hasn't been doing too well because I don't see it around much on things. But they do have this new device and it's to make molds, you know, molds where you can pour hot glue into them or clay or whatever to mold things. And it basically looks like a, well, it reminds me of a Vegematic. Remember those? I guess they're still around where you, you lifted it up, had the blades down here, you put a potato in, you went poof, and you know, it sliced, diced, and made julienne fries. Well, that's what it looks like to me. I guess there's a sheet of plastic. You put your three-dimensional item. They were using like a seashell, uh, like a scallop shell. Put it in on this the bed of this thing. Put in the plastic. 
push this thing down, the plastic goes over top of it, and it, I guess you plug it in and it heats up and it sort of melts the plastic so it forms around the object you've put in that you're trying to make a mold from. Uh, but here's the kicker, you have to attach your vacuum cleaner to it as well. Now this is the part that makes me less excited about an item like this. Can you imagine, we have central vac, so I've got to get out a 30 foot hose and attach it to this machine to make one of these and that just doesn't seem really convenient um so i don't know i would like to actually see one working and i haven't done a, a search yet i i've been watching all weekend long as i've been sewing that quilt i've been watching a lot of creativation um you know lives and recorded videos of of the different different new products and interviews and things like that and i haven't yet seen a video uh, about this particular device with the exception of one that happened right at the very beginning where they have you know all the latest things are out in a central lobby area no one's really demoing them they're under glass and you can look at it uh, so I'd like to see it actually working now with we are memory keepers they have a uh, this bad habit of showing you things that are in prototype and then they don't come out with it for a year or they have found there's problems with it. It doesn't work quite the way they thought. So, you know, don't get too excited about anything We Are Memory Keepers comes out with because you're probably not going to be able to get your hands on it until the late fall or into the winter of this year, if then. Uh, they're very slow to get it to market. They're very fast to show it to you. They're very slow to get it to market. Anyways, it looks interesting and I'd be curious. So I'm going to do some more exploring on YouTube to see if there's a video about that in actually showing it working. Um, Dana Wakely came out with a new set of acrylic sprays. They look interesting. Now I have a ton of sprays, some that work, some that are dried up. Uh, you know, everything from Tim Holtz's distress sprays to dilution paint sprays, that kind of stuff. I've got lots of sprays and I don't use them much anymore. But I did, this really perked my interest when I saw these because the properties they had and what they do so I don't know when they those will come out and I'll have to wait and see if my local uh, craft store is going to get them in or I can order them through them because I may like to try those but and Tim Holtz has come out with a new set of stamps now I have a lot of Stampers Anonymous stamps his line in fact to the point where I don't need any more but he came out with this set called Snarky Cats and it's sort of like, you remember Grumpy Cat? That was all the YouTube sensation for many years. Um, well, these kind of remind me of Grumpy Cat. And they look like they're just kind of fun and something a little different. And you know, I like cats. So I don't know, I don't know if I would invest in them. They're probably about 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, but, you know, Canadian dollars. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I need another rubber stamp like I need a hole in the head. But who knows? Sorry, my stomach is giving me a little problem here this morning. Always seems to do that when I'm doing a vlog. Okay, so the other thing though that I am a little excited about and I'm going to explore further uh, probably tomorrow at Michael's is the line of products by Plaid. You know, they're the people that make Mod Podge and all that kind of stuff. Well, they have some new products coming out, but actually they had a bunch of products they showed that they've already come out with. They've had out for a year or more, which I was not aware of. There's something with chunky glitter in it. There's um, some other paints and things like that. So I might explore those a little bit more and, you know, maybe pick up, pick up a few just to try, uh, you know, for mixed media. Um, one of the things I want to get my hands on, though, is they have a spray Mod Podge. Now, this has been out for a while. Um, I've never tried it. But after watching these videos and seeing what you can do with it, I am more interested. So I may invest in a bottle of that and see what it's all about. Um, and if I do, I'll show it to you too and let you know how I feel about it. So anyways, that's sort of some of the things that caught my eye for at Creativation this year. Um, okay, and there was something else I was going to tell you about new products and it's gone right out of my head. Maybe it'll come back before the end of the vlog. If it does, I will tell you. Okay, um, book of the week. This is an oldie, and this is for you scrapbookers. Yes, surprise for scrapbookers. It is called The Book of Us. Now, way back, 
in the early years of my scrapbooking, back in the, around 2003, 2004, people were doing uh, scrapbook albums about themselves, sort of autobiographical kinds of things. And this lady, Angie Pedersen, I think is her name. Pedersen, yeah. She came out with a book about the book of me. Well, she came out later with one called The Book of Us about relationships and things like that. And it's a great book for not just layout ideas, but uh, prompts and things like that. What, what to put in your, your book besides just wedding pictures, which I just flipped by. Um, I really like her style and I really like her ideas for journaling because um, that's really more what she focuses on. Uh, but if you're thinking about doing something that's a little bit more personal, um, maybe a book that someday down the road you can leave to your children or grandchildren, then you might find this really helpful. Now, what's it cost? It cost me at the time that I bought it, which was a long time ago, $32.99 Canadian. I looked it up. You can get this on Amazon.ca for $8.41 plus whatever the shipping would be. So not bad. Um, that's of course all in Canadian dollars. Uh, so you might, if you're thinking of doing something a little different in your scrapbooks or doing a different type of scrapbook, this might be for you. The Book of Us by Angie Patterson. And Patterson is spelled P-E-D-E-R-S-E-N. And I have a link to this book in the show notes. Okay, so works in progress. Well, we've got our iCraft al album scrapbook, they call it. This is part one. This is the last iCraft kit that is available. I checked on the weekend to see if they've come out with anything else new. They have not. So after we get through doing this one over the next couple of weeks, this is the last of the series. And I'll have to move on to something new. So today, part one, the iCraft album scrapbook, how to assemble it. And believe me, there were some problems with this. So today we're going to tackle the iCraft album scrapbook. And this one is a fairly substantial one. It feels like there's a lot of things in this package. And it says this set contains one set of 18 pieces each of white, black, and craft card stock. This scrapbook can accommodate 40 photos. So you get three scrapbooks in here for the price of, well, not for the price of one, but at $10.99 Canadian, I don't think you can go wrong with that. So on the back, as always, the kit shows you the measurements for each of the pieces and as you've heard me say before if you've watched some of my other iCraft videos these measurements mean absolutely nothing when it comes to putting it together. Now the point of this one though is do we have a set of instruction sheets and it doesn't say there are. Some of the packages say there are DIY instructions. Um, I think that's some of the newer kits they've come out with that have that. So let's just open up the package and see what we have. Okay. So, indeed, we do have white, black, and craft. Now, they all seem to be a little bit mixed together. I'm going to assemble the black one. So, I'm going to get rid of all these other pieces. And there seems to be quite a few pieces here. So, there's some of the black. Now, I'm getting a little worried already because... There are pieces in here with no instructions that I am not sure where they're going to go. I'm not sure what any of these might be for. Okay, anything black in these? Yes, there is. Or is there? Maybe not. That's all craft. That's all white. And over here, separate out the craft. And here is black. Okay. Alrighty. So, lots and lots of little pieces. So, can we make heads or tails out of this? Let's keep this diagram close by. Now, in some of the other kits, they have included, as I said, the instruction sheet. And on the instruction sheet, which I find very handy, they list all the pieces. So just by looking at this diagram at the 
back and what it looks like at the front, I would say that that's probably the base and it has the score lines on it. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seems like a weird number, seven of these pages which look like they're the pages inside. Okay. And I have two that look like this, scored at the top. I have no idea. Then I have some tag looking things. So I'm assuming this probably has pockets for the tags. I'm just punching out the little circles in there. And then we have these things. And I have no idea what these are. There's that, and that, and that, and that. And I have no idea what those are. They do show them on the back. Again, check for instructions, no instructions. So, I'm really not sure how this goes together. Now, thinking about past ones that I have done, let's just move these pieces off to the side. Start with this, which looks like it's probably the base. Um, there are some score lines on it, so I can uh, crease these on the score lines. Maybe this will give me more of an idea as to how this might go together. Okay, so if this is the base, looks like there's a spine on here. Only this picture we have to go by. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, this one looks like this part here. So this goes up. So these two are the same space in here. So those must be... The only thing is, when you close it up, those will not, well, they might join if I get them in the, okay, those probably overlap. So that's probably the outside and probably opens like that. Now, the inside, they're showing a whole group of pages here. So let's take one of these and fold it on its score lines. There's two score lines on this, one up here, a narrow one. So let's fold that. Now because of the size of that, I'm assuming that's a hinge. And this is a flap. And they look like they might cascade down in the center piece. Okay. So they probably go... I wonder if they open up. No, I don't think they cascade down because if they cascade down, there's not going to be enough space for them. So they may get layered on top of one another. So something like this. However, if we put them on top of each other, then when they open up, I guess this flap could open this way. And then this one would open. So I'm just looking here again at the diagram, which is absolutely, or the picture, which is exact, absolutely no real help here. But that's what it looks like. They get mounted together inside this center section. Then it looks like there might be a piece actually I think this might go around this way. The larger one up there could match that one there. This is a bigger piece that looks like it might we fold it on the crease line. It looks like it might 
No. Well, one of these, okay, there's a smaller one here too. Okay, and it's got a crease line on here. Okay, I have an idea. I think this is this one. And it goes out here like that. And then this one, because that's a solid piece, but that doesn't fit. Because there's a hinge here. Huh. Okay. Maybe that doesn't. It looks like. I'm not really sure. But it can't fit there because it would cover up the crease line so you wouldn't be able to close the book. Now, if it flap, you could put it this way. Or maybe they're putting it down here on the spine. You could put it that way. It could go that way. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go online to their YouTube channel and see if they've actually done a video for this one. They do them for some of them, but not for many of them. So I'm going to go and explore that, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I think I've got this figured out now. So this is our base piece with the larger flap to the left and our smaller flap to the right. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take, remember those two pieces? We're going to take the smaller one of those, and I've already put tape on all my hinges on here to save some time. And this is going to be attached to this. Just on the inside, you don't want to go across the crease line. So we'll take off the tape on this. And I'm using my piercing tool for this because it allows me to get a get under that. I don't have nails. And so we're just going to center this along this long piece right here. And I'm not putting it right up against the edge because this folds inside. A little bit of my glue tape is there. And use my bone folder to just varnish that well. So that piece is on. And then this piece is going to go down here. And again, this is one doesn't have to go right to the edge. It can go in a little bit. And I'm using double-sided tape and I'm using two sizes. I'm using half inch and quarter inch, depending on the size of the hinge. Oops. You could use wet glue. Okay, so that, those flaps are in. Now, I'm just going to fold them in for now to get them out of our way. I'm going to bend this back a little bit so it's not popping up. And no, I'm going to actually leave that one out. Okay, this presents a problem. Yeah, I'm going to leave that out for now. Just realized something. These go in this way, and they are going to cascade but I want to make sure that I have them up high enough that they don't... Hmm, got a problem. If this is going to fold in, I can't have these. I think I need to pull this out a little bit. Hmm. I gotta think about this, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, I have this figured out now. So, this goes here, and then you've got these hinged parts here that make a spine. So these are being mounted on the spine, starting at the top of the spine, or where this first crease is, not in here. That way it's not going to overlap onto here, and well, that wouldn't be able to open. Does that make sense? So, it will when I show you this. So we're going to take off the tape, and we're going to turn this around, and we're going to line up this edge, this edge right here, with this crease line. Not overlapping it, just lined up to it. And the best way to do this, uh, let's see, what is the best way to do this? I think I would turn the whole thing around this way and approach it from this point. No, that's not the way to do it. Okay. 
Let's just do it. This is awkward. Okay, I'm just going to try and get it. I don't want it to cover the crease line. And about equal distance on either side. So the first one is probably the trickiest one to line up because now I'm going to line them each up along this edge right here. So we take the next one. There are seven pages when I was counting them. There is an odd number. So that's perfectly okay. And line this next one up to it. So it butts up. The edge of it will butt up to the edge of the first one we put down. This is where I'm thinking maybe wet glue is a better alternative because once you get that double-sided tape down it does cause a problem. Now you want to keep them straight so you may have to do a little fudging. For example here I'm a little off so I'm going to make it work just like that. Let's take the next one. We're butting it up. It's getting it lined up here. It is difficult to see when you're working in black. Okay, now you want to keep them as straight as you can when you put them in there or they'll start to veer off and your pages are going to become crooked. And I'm a little bit off here, so I'm basically re-creasing it. And the next one. So I think you probably get the idea now. And I hope you can see it okay. I'll bend that this way. So again, I'm just butting up this little hinge right up to the one page that came before, and I'm trying to keep it lined up and straight. Definitely wet glue might be a better way to go. This is very awkward. At least I find it very awkward. Okay, there we go. And one more here, and then I will just stop the video for a second uh, while I put the rest of them in, because I think you get the idea. And this gets a little tedious, I'm sure. Okay, so I've got two more pages to go, so I'll put those in off camera and I'll be back. Okay, so we have the basic album already assembled now, and uh, actually not too hard once I figured out where the pages should go. So here it is. Now, I did put a magnetic closure up here, and don't mind the glue mark. Um, I had a little trouble with the glue, but that'll be covered up when I put the background papers onto all of this. So that just will keep that um, closed very easily. And then when you open it up, it opens up like this. So now I'm a little off center on this one down here. So I'm just going to adjust. Well, I'll adjust that after I show it to you. But uh, that's what I mean. You got to keep them straight or they'll be all over the place. I'm a little wonky here. So I can do a refold on that. But this one comes out. And then each of these flip out as such. Now, I'm not really sure what the point is of these flaps. I know in, I suppose if you fold them this way, no, it's not going to make a lot. You could do it this way. You could fold them in this way. So you got two out this way and it would go like that. 
but then and then you'd have two blank pages and you could do it this way I guess it's up to you your personal preference as to what you want to do and then this one comes out like that and then the whole thing just folds up and closes and there you go now there are some leftover bits I know what these are obviously these are tags okay so I guess you can insert them somewhere you could build a pocket I have no idea what these are for but they have thrown these in as well in here and I don't know what you do with those maybe they could be little embellishments on the edges I don't know we'll see I don't even know if I'll use these pieces or not I'm not even sure about the tags but I may so that's how you assemble it um, I'm going to do some fine-tuning in the adjustment in the folds with the pockets as I've already mentioned and then I'm going to put the background papers onto all of this So next week we'll work on putting on the background papers. Okay, so that takes us to events in the past week. Update on my mother. Well, we went over last Tuesday, as we always do, and she was in bed and I thought, uh-oh, someone's not feeling well. Well, she wasn't really not feeling well, but my mother will use any excuse to stay in bed so they'll serve her her meals in bed. She likes that for some reason. I don't know why, but she does. Now, she, I had gotten a call a couple of days before we went over to tell me that my mother had a bruise under her eye. And they weren't sure how she did it or how it happened because she hadn't fallen or anything like that. My mother bruises easily. You've heard me say that before. Um, but they said, you know, they were keeping an eye on it, but she was fine. There was no pain or anything involved. I said, okay, fine. Thank you. Of course, they give me that call because, you know, they don't want me to think they're beating up on my mother. So we went over on Tuesday and uh, her eye was a little irritated looking but nothing major but I said so what's wrong with your eye and she says well she didn't know <laughs> standard answer with my mother and I said well she's well it's really itchy and it's a little sore and you could tell she'd been sort of rubbing it so that was irritating it and uh, so I suspected she had an eye infection of some sort and I wondered you know pink eye whether it was that it didn't look like pink eye though I've had pink eye before and it's called pink eye for a reason your eye does go like red pink kind of a thing hers didn't look like that but it could have been the beginning stages anyways I asked her if the nurse practitioner had seen her yet well supposed to be coming but no had not I never know how much is true with my mother and how much is not so I went and, s and sought out one of the help and they said oh yeah uh, they would put in a thing to the nurse practitioner they didn't they didn't seem to be too worried about her eye but whatever uh, I was felt more comfortable knowing that a professional a nurse practitioner is basically the next thing to a doctor uh, in some cases better than a doctor and they do have a doctor that visits there all the time but anyways so I went back in said to my mother my mother well they've nurse practitioner is supposed to come and see at some point today and I've told them that you know I'd like to be notified after she does what's going on and you know if I said to mom if I don't hear from them by the end of the day I'll give a call and find out what's going on so they didn't call and the next day though they did call me I didn't get around to calling them that day um, and yep she had an eye infection wasn't pink eye though uh, they gave it a name don't ask me what the name was because um, I can't remember and I did never heard of it before but it sounded like it was a minor eye infection and they were going to they needed my permission to get her polysporin for it, eye drops and I said sure by all means so I tried to get a hold of my mother yesterday her new habit now is not answering the phone she told me last week the reason you know she can never get to the phone it'd be better in a different spot so I just rounded up some extension cords and extension plugs for the phone so I'm going to relocate her phone in her room tomorrow uh, so it will be more convenient for her to get her hands on it um, and I know the same thing's going to happen. I don't know what's with her. She says she gets all flustered with the phone. Does she? I don't know. I mean, I'm almost getting to the point where if you're not going to answer your phone, why do you have a phone? It's not like you ever use it to call out or anything. You know, we're paying big bucks for you to have a phone in there. Maybe I should just remove it. We'll see. 
Um, but anyways, uh, so I don't know what the status is about her eye. I won't know until tomorrow when I go over. But if it was anything uh, serious or took a lot more attention, uh, they would call me. That's one thing they're really good about uh, at the home she's in. They really keep you up to date on everything. So I'm not worried about that. So that's my mother. Okay, had a guild meeting on Monday, Quilters Guild meeting. And I was really looking forward to this one because we each month we have a guest speaker. And the guest speaker we had this time was a lady called Karen Brown. And she has a YouTube channel, very popular one, um, called Just Get It Done Quilts. And she's from Toronto, so she's very close. So I was looking forward to hearing her speak because I watch her videos all the time. I love her videos. I think they're great. Um, boy, was I disappointed. I don't know if she was having an off night or what but it was one of the most disorganized uh, talks I have ever seen. Uh, maybe she was relying on the fact that what she was talking about is something she has talked about uh, many times on her YouTube channel. It was about color theory. It was color theory and UFOs. UFOs stand for unfinished objects, um, which is an expression quilters use for quilt projects they haven't gotten done yet. And I was trying to figure out what the link was between the two of them and I never did figure out that link. Well, I did sort of figure out the link but it was pretty weak link for one thing. Um, she had trouble for the first 10 minutes with her equipment getting it set up, her you know her projector and her computer. She had a little sound system that she wore on her belt. Well we have a sound system in the hall we meet in that we use all the time which is pretty good. This thing she had was like, where'd you buy that? The dollar store? It it was whole, very rinky dinky. It kept cutting out and the sound in it was very difficult to hear her, to understand what you're saying. She would have been better off without a miking system, period. And as I said, the whole talk was very disorganized and she had a big binder with a lot of notes in it and she was leafing through them all the time. And I know that this what the talk she was giving us was probably a cut down version of an overall five part course she has done on her YouTube channel and what she is going to be offering soon in her space as a you know a paid course. So I think she was taking bits and pieces from various sections of that but they weren't tied together very well. So needless to say I was very disappointed and this is where you realize that when people edit and she's a heavy editor on her YouTube channel. Um, yeah, editing, editing and doing a YouTube video can be very different from doing a live speech. Um, so I was a little disappointed. That's not to say I would stop watching her YouTubes because I won't. I still think she's really good. I just was expecting more, I guess. So as I said, maybe she was just having an off night. It's a possibility with that. So. Anyways, that was on Monday. And nothing else too exciting throughout the week. Um, I guess what's coming up? Doctor's appointment. Ugh, not looking forward to that. Every three months I go to the doctor. Not by my choice, by my doctor's choice. Yeah, so I have to have blood work done this week, as you do when you go to the doctor. And um, I'm hoping that when she weighs me this time that um, I'm a little less. I mean, I've weighed myself. I, I am losing weight very slowly, not by great gobs. But as I've told you before, Walter and I are on this IF kind of intermittent fasting kind of thing. And um, it does work. Walter's lost a fair amount of weight, but he's been on it for a lot longer than me. Um, so I'm hoping she will see that as a positive thing because my doctor is very concerned about weight. Um, she herself, you could spit through her. She's like a little thin toothpick. Simple as that. I don't think she eats. I think she has a glass of water and a toothpick and probably you hold the toothpick. So, you know. So, yeah. I don't like going to doctors. She's very nice. Um, she's very efficient. I'll say that for her too as well. But I don't like Doctors, dentists, lawyers, veterinarians, anything that has anything to do with anybody's health, I don't like because they're never filled with good news. It's always bad news, always with them. I think 
to go into that profession, you got to be the kind of person that loves delivering bad news. Or, you know, they kind of treat you like you're a car. And you know, oh, well, your car's getting a little old here. You better have this done. You better have that checked. And maybe you need that part done. If it's not broke, don't fix it, is what I say. And I'm not broke. I'm fine. Lucky me. Knock wood. Hope to always be. But I get white coat syndrome when I see doctors and things like that. My blood pressure goes off the roof. And oh, well, that's life, eh? What can you do about it? Okay. So that's what I have looking forward to coming up. Oh yeah, Walter's birthday's next week too. Forgot about that. On the same day we go to the doctor, January 27th. Um, so yeah, I've already ordered something for him and now I'm thinking, ooh, maybe I've ordered the wrong thing. You know, I hate that feeling. So anyways, I'll give it to him anyways. And we'll see. Okay. So that's it for me this week. Uh, nothing else to really talk to you about. So I hope you have a really good week. Um, I hope you're able to join us for Stephen and Walter Live. As I said, if you have suggestions for what we can talk about or do, please, please, please don't keep them to yourself. Put them in the show notes below. Send me an email. Let me know. No idea is crazy. Okay, simple as that. Um, so I hope you have a great week and we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.